Hello again. In a previous video, we were looking at the item site record for an item T-Box 2, and specifically within that for site WH1, we were looking at the planning tab. And we saw that this item was an MRP planned item, that it had a reorder point of 100, an order up to of 500, and an order multiple of 25 with a lead, day, lead time of three days. Let's actually go run an MRP for WH1, and we'll do a cutoff of, say, 30 days. What that means is that we're looking at sources of supply and demand out through but not beyond 30 days uh, and taking those into account in our material requirements planning run. We're going to run it for all planner codes, and we're going to run it for only site WH1. Please note that if you have Xtuple Connect uh, installed and configured, uh, you will have a schedule button that shows up here, and you can actually schedule this through Xtuple Connect and reschedule it to run on a nightly basis. By the way, if you do that, it's best to run it after midnight so that when your planners walk in the next morning, they're seeing a run that was run on the date um, that, they're, um, that they're working on. Okay, we're also going to create MRP exceptions. These are the exceptions that look at existing actual orders, so not planned orders, but real purchase orders, real work orders, and may suggest that an order be entirely canceled. It may be, suggest that it get moved in or get moved out or that the quantity may need to be changed on it. So we'll go ahead and create those exceptions. If you're not in the habit of actually looking at and reviewing those exceptions, turn this off uh, and schedule it with this off because it simply adds overhead that you don't need if, if you're not using those displays. So I'll go ahead and run this. Um, normally, you would expect in a larger database for this to make take many minutes to run, but this is a small database, so it runs very, very quickly. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to slide over to the next option, which is display planned orders. By the way, if you're interested in where um, to go to get to those options through the menu structure, that's under schedule, scheduling, and then I just ran an MRP by planner code. There's the little toolbar button. And then if I go to schedule and um, reports, there's my display for planned orders. So I'm simply moving from left to right here, looking at my planned orders. There's some other demand and so forth out there for other items. But in particular, we were interested in this particular item, T-Box 2. What I draw your attention to is the fact that we've got an order quantity of 450, and we've got a start date of today with a due date uh, uh, actually on the 7th. Now, if you look at the calendar, today is a Wednesday and the 7th is, uh, I believe, is a Monday. So what it's doing is because we are using the, uh, the shop calendar, Saturday and Sunday are closed days. So effectively, my lead time of three days is three working days. Uh, another thing that we can do to, to understand this more fully is we can right click on it and display running availability. This will actually show all order activity interleaved by date and give us a running availability number. Now, notice that our current quantity on hand is 70, our reorder level is 100, our order up to is 500, and our order multiple is 25. So why would it have ordered enough to get us up to a running availability of 520? Why shouldn't it stop at 500? Well, that gets back to the order multiple. So basically, if it ordered exactly what it needed, that would have been a quantity that was not in conformance with the order multiple. Whereas the order quantity here, 450, conforms to an even multiple of 25. Okay, so that's just a quick look at the planning tab and the item site record and then the results of that in an MRP run. Thanks again for joining.